While the relationship between Streptococcus gyalericus biotype 1, formerly embedded in the D. streptococci or Streptococcus bovis group, and colorectal cancer has been recognized for decades, and international guidelines systematically recommend performing a colonoscopy in patients presenting with Streptococcus gyalericus bacteremia or endocarditis, the relationship between Dragogus fecalis and colorectal neoplasms has just been recently suggested. Hi, my name is Juan Pericas, and I'm an infectious disease physician working at the cardiovascular infectious team in the Hospital Clinic of Barcelona, Spain. I'm delighted to discuss some of the highlights of our article, Prevalence of Colorectal Neoplasms Among Patients with Enterococcus Fecalis Endocarditis in the GAMES cohort 2008-2017. Enterococcal endocarditis is a growing entity in Western countries, and enterococci have been identified as one of the leading causes of endocarditis in some global series, and particularly among patients in chronic hemodialysis programs and those undergoing transcatheter or valve replacement. Besides improvement in diagnostic approaches, this increasing trend is closely related to epidemiological changes, such as all the population and nosocomial acquisition. Ceragogus fecalis, which is a saprophyte gram positive bacterium that may be found through the whole digestive tract from the oral cavity to the rectum, causes over 90% of enterococcal endocarditis cases. However, thus far, colonoscopy does not make part of the test systematically performed to investigate the source of enterococcal fecal endocarditis. Therefore, as opposed to screening of potentially urinary catheter associated surgical wound or biliary sources, the colorectal tract is not universally considered as a potential source of enterococcal fecal endocarditis. Yet, when we reviewed the cases of enterococcal fecal endocarditis <clears throat> that had indeed underwent a colonoscopy in our center and in another Spanish hospital, we found that the prevalence of colorectal neoplasm was strikingly high. And particularly, colorectal neoplasm were around 15 fall higher than in the Spanish general population, particularly in the case of colorectal carcinoma. Of course, this was poor evidence coming from a relatively short series with a retrospective design and only investigating those cases of enterococcus fecalis endocarditis that were considered to have an unknown source. Shortly after that study was published, another study involving Spanish and Italian sites in which colonoscopy was performed systematically in both patients with no and unknown sources of infection show similar results with high prevalence of colorectal neoplasm in both groups. So we aim to study the prevalence of colorectal neoplasms in patients with enterococcus fecalis endocarditis with available colonoscopy results in the GAINS cohort. The GAINS cohort is composed by 35 hospitals covering the entire Spanish territory. At the time of the analysis, data with complete follow-up were available until end 2017. We asked investigators that have reported intercogus fecalis endocarditis cases to the central database to review them all in order to identify those with available colonoscopies. We found that among 468 patients with intercogus fecalis endocarditis, including in the cohort during the study period, 142 had a colonoscopy close to the endocarditis episode. Hundreds of them had an unknown source. The overall rate of colorectal disease was 70.4%, whereas the prevalence of colorectal neoplasm encompassing advanced adenomas and colorectal carcinoma was 14.7%, which is almost exactly the same than in the prior Spanish studies. Moreover, there were no significant differences regarding the prevalence of colorectal neoplasm between the group with an unknown source and that with an unknown source. Remarkably, Almost half of the diagnosis of colorectal diseases were done during a follow-up after the endocarditis episode. Also, we found significantly lower in hospital and one-year mortality in the group of enterococcus fecalis endocarditis with an available colonoscopy compared to that without a colonoscopy, as well as a trend to higher relapse rate in the former group. In conclusion, our study validates prior findings suggesting a significantly higher rate of malignant colorectal neoplasms in patients with enterococcus fecalis endocarditis than in the general population. This occurred both in patients with a reportedly 
identified source of infection and in those with an unknown source. Our results suggest that a colonoscopy should be more frequently used to identify the source of infection in Enterococcus fecalis endocarditis, and particularly to rule out colorectal neoplasms. The next steps should involve prospective studies with a control group of healthy volunteers in order to validate our findings. Some other relevant aspects to be considered in further investigations include the feasibility of systematically performing colonoscopies in patients that are usually old and present with high burdens of comorbidities, as well as the potential geographic variability of our findings, and whether and how often follow-up colonoscopies should be performed. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.